Lots happened since our last podcast. How he likes it that way. He does. Uh, if anyone's really happy that the Eagles signed Julio Jones, you can thank us, I think. Yeah, how he's in his office. And I think he's got like a telescope so he can kind of look in here. And when he sees us get up and leave the podcast, he's like, okay, <laughs> calls the agent. Okay, we can do it now. <laughs> a uh, 34-year-old Julio Jones didn't quite rise to the level of an emergency pod, but we'll talk about that if today. If he was in his prime, it would have. Yeah, if he was in his prime, I think we would have uh, we would have hurried up and, and gotten a pod out. But we'll talk about that a little bit today. We have a lot to talk about on the Eagle Eye podcast brought to you by Nissan. Uh, Ruben Frank, Dave Sangaro here. Big matchup against Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Remember that song? They play it after they score a touchdown. I just remember Houston Oilers song. Houston Oilers. They're all pretty similar. Houston Oilers. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll talk it's about the Dolphins. That. There's no Houston. Do they do that with the Texans? They have a. No, it's very, really strange too because like when a team leaves a city like that, like I kind of feel like the Texans should get that history. Yeah, well, like, like the Browns. Yeah. They became the Browns, even though they're yeah. not the Browns. Yeah, and they should get all the history. Like, like that history shouldn't be in Baltimore. Like the records and the Yeah. It's weird. Well, the the I know the Browns list everything that happened in Cleveland, the first iteration of the Browns in their record book. Oh, do they? And some of those same records are in the Ravens record book. Yeah, it's a little tricky. It, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. But like they should get like like well, the, obviously throwback jerseys are a big thing right now and this week especially with the eagles wearing kelly green like the texans should be able to throw on an oilers yeah throwback but that they're the titans i know but it, yeah, no one weird. in tennessee cares i know yeah. uh, we care <laughs> yeah we care too much uh yeah so we'll talk about julio the dolphins coming to town big matchup we have you know some... what? and i'm gonna interrupt that's one cool thing about the eagles same name same city yeah since 1933 it's not many franchises like that yeah except for the steagles which you know they were never called the steagles until after they existed is that right what they, were they called they were called like the eagle steelers combined franchise and then so i think a reporter like after the fact started oh playing. is that right yeah man they needed a marketing team back then yeah i don't think they had that yeah they yeah. should have where was their internet group steagles feels like a, a nice little layup i'm sure you could have had a lot of good merch the eelers Steagles probably works better. Yeah, Steagles I better than Eagles. If anyone has a Steagles jersey? So somebody could make a lot of money. Maybe not. I don't think anyone's buying that. I would. It's probably just like a very boring looking jersey. I'd wear a Steel. Well, I think they just. I, don't, I think they wore the Steag the Eagles and Steelers uniforms. Ah, oh. I don't think there was. I don't think there was an actual Steagles. It's not like the Donna Kelsey half Chiefs half. Yeah, I don't think Eagles <laughs> uniform. I don't think they did that. All right. Anyway, yeah, this we, is the earliest we've ever gone. Yeah, this we're far three minutes into this. We uh, we are Completely nowhere near where we need to be. Uh, <laughs> it's like we made it. We came out of the house and made a left. We we're supposed to make a right, and we're just off somewhere. Um, yeah. So we'll talk about the Dolphins in a little bit. Of, plenty to talk about there. A lot of injury stuff to get to as well. We'll try to guess who's going to be on the field on Sunday night, which is not an easy game to play. But let's start with Julio a little bit. Uh, what was your first reaction? It was kind of a surprise on like late afternoon Tuesday. They sent out a tweet. We have signed Julio Jones and everyone goes, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. My first reaction was, I thought he was like on a team somewhere. <laughs> um, I just kind of assumed uh, he had been bouncing around late in his career. Um, so it just kind of took me aback. I was like, wait, isn't he somewhere? Um, he was with Tampa last year. Um, but my second thought was, um, why, <laughs> I guess. Uh, my third thought was how he knows what he's doing. So let's see if he can still play. Yeah, I, I went through that. And I, I think, you know, you look at the receiver depth hasn't been great. And I, I kind of thought back to last year at defensive tackle where their depth wasn't great. And they went out and they signed Indomitian Sue and, and Limbaugh Joseph. Like really just players to help their depth. but the biggest names possible so it like it sounded bigger than it was and yeah. like this is this feels similar to me but there should have been a second one they should have signed tory holt too or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're going a little far back there uh but that's what it it felt like to me it's like this is a a guy who might help you he brings some depth uh but the name is bigger than the player at this point which sure. is okay like, yeah you know you're, you're not expecting him to be 2017 Julio. One good thing about Linval and and Sue is that they they were fine in their roles. They mm -hmm. were okay. They accepted them. 
Um, and they played him well. Um, and that's the thing, you know, that Julio's going to have to do. Obviously, he's not going to be one or two here, assuming Devontae's healthy. Um, but um, he seems to be understand that. And- yeah, he gets that. Uh, we had a chance to talk to him a little bit uh, on Wednesday. So let's actually play some of of Julio. I, I made a really good first impression on him that we should <laughs> uh, we should take a listen to. You spoke about playing whatever role they need as a, mm-hmm. as a Hall of Fame type player. How mm-hmm. do you go about kind of readjusting that mindset? Oh, no, no, no. My mindset is definitely to dominate. Don't get it twisted. You know, I'm, 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 I'm here to dominate, you know. But I'm saying, like, um, they have the guys are already here. They solidify and they're in their positions, right? So, like, wherever they wherever they need me to go and be, I'm going to do that at my best of my ability. At this point in your career, how much do you, do you feel like you have left? Have left? I just keep watching. You know, I ain't going to make no expectations. Just keep watching, and I, I can show you. We'll, we'll revisit this question. All right? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I told him we will we revisit it at some point, and that's fine with me. Uh, I like I the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was a fair question. Yeah, I remember when the Eagles signed uh, Mark Duper in mm-hmm. training camp at Westchester. Um, similar thing. He was probably about the same age, maybe a little younger. What's Julio? 30, 34. 34. Yeah, he's the same age. And Mark Duper had a really, really good career with the Dolphins. And somebody asked him something similar, and he's like, you know, I'm I'm the same player I've always been. Two weeks later, they caught him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never made it to opening day. So you never know with a guy like that. Um, you you really don't. I mean, there's just we've seen these, we've seen older guys come in and and do okay, and we've seen older guys come in and just have nothing left. So um, we have to see. But uh, it, there's nothing to lose. That's the thing. There's nothing to lose. He's on the practice squad right now technically and we saw the eagles do this with bradley roby too there i mean the the eagles play with the roster numbers like no other team uh and so they really do view it as an extension of the roster so he's on the practice squad now how many hall of famers have ever been on a practice squad i was well you know what's funny during uh well wednesday i was like this is the most questions to and about a practice squad player ever yeah right yeah i mean they they have had starting caliber guys on the practice squad, obviously, but nobody like this. Not a Hall of Famer. Josh McCown. Yeah, not a Hall of Famer. Josh McCown, not a Hall of Famer. Yeah, uh, Julio, Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah, one of the the best players of his era. Um, but like you know, even they didn't even announce it as as they signed him to the practice squad. They just said they signed him, which tells you that this is a little different. They're, they're he's going to be on the roster at some point. He's going to play. He might play this weekend. I think he probably will. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's you know, yeah, I wouldn't read into the practice squad element of this. Yeah, I don't think he's a developmental player. <laughs> and the Eagles have been at the uh, again another thing. The Eagles have been at the cutting edge or uh, forefront of the um, using the practice squad kind of expanding its role. Mm-hmm. And when it when it expanded to 16 players, I mean, you had that flexibility. And when they took all the restrictions away from it, yeah. you used to, like, it had to be players with this much experience, and it was really just a developmental thing, and it's not that anymore. I think you have to kind of balance those 16 spots for guys you want to develop, like guys who are projects, but also it's an extension of your roster. You need these players now. Yeah, it's just, it's not a 53-man roster. It really is 69-man roster, and I mean, out of the, the practice, Eagles practice squad, I mean, most of those guys are developmental, but. Well. Right. Yeah, I guess so. But, like, sometimes you need those guys to play. Yeah, especially secondary. But, um, yeah, I like the way how he uses the practice squad. He's very creative with it. And um, the three-week window gives you that flexibility to, all right, we, don't, we can put off this decision, this roster decision, mm-hmm. who to cut, who to IR, whatever. And you got three weeks of a Hall of Fame receiver without having him on the roster. It's pretty good luxury. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, you you mentioned like him knowing his role in this team. I think the the pre existing relationships help there. Sure. Uh, he called AJ Brown like his little brother. They've had a long standing relationship, and AJ was even the guy who pushed for the Titans to to bring him in. So. You know, AJ is not going to feel threatened by him. Devontae, he's known for a long time. Julio, obviously, an Alabama guy. So he used to go back to Alabama, work out, spend some time with those guys. So he knows Jalen Hurts. He knows Devontae Smith. So, you know, all those relationships are important because we talk about it like so much that, 
there are there are egos involved with great players who want to catch the football. So you have to be really tricky or it's really tricky and you have to be really careful about who you bring in to that mix. So you have a guy like Julio that they trust and they're going to be okay with him getting a few targets his way. Yeah, and I'm sure that was part of the evaluation process was, hey, AJ, how would Julio be if he gets two targets in a game? Yeah. yeah, just as important. Hey AJ, how are you going to be <laughs> if he takes all your targets? Well, I don't think that'll happen. But um, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah. So he's one of seven of the top twenty-five receivers in NFL history in terms of yards have suited up for the Eagles at some point. Some of them are obvious. Yeah. You want to try naming them, or should I just go through them? Um. Well, some of them are obvious, like To is obvious. But go ahead. To he's third. Mm-hmm. Um. And then you go to James Lofton, who who finished oh, his wow. career here in uh, um, in 1993, played nine games, caught 13 passes, 167 yards, Hall of Famer. Uh, Chris Carter, who sure. spent, um, spent four years here, um, three years, 87 to 89, was a supplemental draft pick. Uh, he had had issues at Ohio State that had made him ineligible for the regular draft, and they took him in the 87 supplemental draft. I think he still has the Eagles record for most touchdowns as a rookie. I believe he had nine or something like that. And then you have um, – I lost the page. Let's see if I – Joseph Ngata has some work to do then. Huh? He's got some catching up yeah. to do. So you have those three, and then you have um, – then you have Irving Fryer. Three good years, 95 to 97 here. Very good years, right? Yeah, great years. I mean, at 35, he caught like 88 balls yeah. as an eagle. Uh, Art Monk, uh, he finished his career here. <laughs> He's one you forget about. My high school teammate at White Plains. We were we were teammates on the track team. Uh, he was here in 95, played three games, broke his arm on his third catch as an eagle, never played again. Um, and then Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith was uh, in training camp. I don't know if you know his whole story. Um, when he was he was actually drafted by the Cowboys, and he actually sued them. There was injury stuff, and he sued them about his medical treatment. Um, and then he landed he he landed with the Eagles in training camp of his first year with the Jaguars was what? So he didn't play in ninety three. So it was not or ninety four. It was ninety five training camp. Ninety four. I'm sorry. It was ninety four. And Randall loved Jimmy Smith, and. Wanted to keep him, but Rich Kotite wanted to keep Jeff Seidner instead. Ooh. Jeff Seidner had one career catch. Uh, Jimmy Smith, who was a really underrated super player, 862 for 12,287 yeah, yards. It's crazy. He's top 25 all time. Yeah, he's number 25. Five. He had him and Keenan McCardell down there for so yeah. long. They were great together. Yeah. Um, he made five straight Pro Bowls. Um, he was an all pro one year. Um, he had one, two, three, four. He had seven straight thousand yard seasons, and then two more. His final season in the league at thirty six, he was over a thousand yards. Um, should, probably should be get some Hall, Hall of Fame consideration. Maybe not quite there, but close. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's seven guys. There, most of them finished their career here. Chris Carter started his career here. Most of them played here at, a, at an older age. But it's interesting how many how many played here. And I wonder who's next on that list who did play here. Deshaun. And it's just funny that, like, of all those guys, none of them are, like, in contention to be the Eagles' greatest. First, you know what I mean? Like, right. You know, you go to. Well, T.O., I mean, is in the conversation. He's. But he only played yeah. 21 games. Um, but, I mean, he's in the conversation. But, yeah, they were all. For, like, peak, of course. Yeah. yeah. They were all here late in their career, except Chris Carter's here. And Jimmy Smith, who never played a game for the Eagles. But uh, it's interesting. Yeah. To me. Uh, to no one else. Your gut, how much does he help this team? Because they, they, it's funny that you know we're talking about all this. They, they signed him because Quez Watkins is on on IR, and you're down to Alameda Zacchaeus, AJ Brown, uh, Hamstrung, Devontae Smith, and Britton Covey. Devin Allen, don't forget him. Joseph Ngata. Joseph Ngata. There's another receiver on the practice squad, right? Maybe. I think. Um, Greg Ward. Oh, G Ward. Yeah. Yeah, the, the practice squad on their roster page is so funny. Ben Van Sumeren, Teron Jackson, Taiwan Mullen, Julio Jones. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so funny. Um, Thomas Booker. Um, I think – I don't think it'll make a huge impact. I think it'll catch a couple balls. 
over under which makes it worth it. So what's they played six games, they have eleven, 11 games left. left. Over under twenty two and a half catches. I was gonna say twenty five okay. is a good number. Yeah. Um so I'll take the over. Okay. I'll take the over, but barely. Yeah. I mean that makes it a good number. It's it's funny because like realistically, he hasn't played a ton of games. He played ten last year, ten the year before, nine the year before that. He hasn't played more than ten games since twenty nineteen when he was a Pro Bowl player. Yeah. And he was like, you know, maybe not his prime anymore, but like still really good. So I don't know how many games he'll be available. Yeah, that's the big question. Um I mean, yeah, it's been – I mean, he, caught, he had 770 yards in nine games in 20. Yeah. So, like, his yards per game there was still pretty good. I mean, 85.7 yards per game That's huge. his last year in Atlanta. But then 43 per game in 2021. Last year, about 30 per game. So, that's a drop-off, and and that's a concern. Mm -hmm. um, he had three – What? how many years with over 100 yards per game? One, two, three, four, five years with – Averaging over 100 yards. And two others over 90. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, it was really cool. I got to ask Nick Sirianni about him yesterday because Nick is such a wide receiver geek. Uh, and he was, like, pumped to talk about Julio. And he didn't want to give away the route he was talking about specifically that Julio is great at because, you know, competitive advantage. No one's seen Julio Jones play. Right. But, no film on him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it was cool to see Nick all geeked up about him. Yeah, because he doesn't get geeked up too often. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think he'll make an impact, but not a huge one. Okay. That's probably realistic. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you get, uh, you know, and Dominican Sue, Linvald, Joseph level production out of Julio, obviously it'll be different because there's like more tangible stats for receiver right. play, but that you take that. Sure. Yeah. He's younger than those guys too, right? They were like 35, I mean, 36. Younger, but at a position where you age quicker. True. Yeah, or I mean, you age out of it quicker. I should look. Say. There's there's a very real chance this won't work out. But mm -hmm. again, there's nothing to lose and a lot to gain. Yeah, and it's going to be kind of fun seeing Julio Jones in a in the Eagles jersey. A that little weird. Be. Yeah. It was funny. He was asked about uh, 2017, and uh, he, he pretended like he didn't remember <laughs> <laughs> that game. At all. That was a long time ago. I don't even remember what you're talking about. Really? Yeah. It was okay. funny. No, Jalen Mills isn't here anymore. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, some that, was, other, that was one exciting finish, though. Yeah, I mean that the whole season could have ended in Julio Jones's hands. Yeah, incredible. He didn't talk about it at all. No, no, said he didn't remember it. Interesting. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> um, the bigger <laughs> news of the week, I guess, is that Josiah Scott is back. <laughs> I mean, one guy's on the practice squad, one guy's on the active roster. That tells you what. Yeah, you know, you know that's the pecking order right here. Josiah Scott on the 53-man roster. Some other guy named Julio Jones down there on the practice squad. Uh, we we mentioned Josiah Scott. You mentioned him I did. Uh, when all these injuries were piling up, and we found out that he was on the, uh, the Steelers practice squad IR, so we didn't even know if he'd be available. He was, and he's here. Yeah, yeah. Um... He could wear that Steagles jersey, I guess. Yeah. Eagle Steelers in the same season. Um, I mean, I was, I guess, half serious when I threw that name out there, but I mean he was here in training camp, mm -hmm. kind of seems like a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but he knows, you know, he knows the defense. Um, I mean, he's not good, but he's better than <laughs> He's not. I wasn't expecting you to just say he's not good. He's not. I mean, <laughs> really, he's not. But he knows the defense, and he's better than what they I have. You were going to say something like he's not going to be, like, the best option. He's not the most ideal option, but that he's not good got me pretty good. I mean, let's be let's be honest. Um, <laughs> but he knows the defense, and he's better than what they have. I mean, he's better than Mario Goodrich. Yeah, who? So that was the other part of the shuffle. They waived Mario Goodrich, who then cleared waivers. One forty nine passer rating against. Yeah, and he's now on the practice squad. So I mean, that makes sense. In order to get Josiah Scott, you had to bring him to the fifty three because he was on a practice right. squad. It's also a three week uh, commitment to him now, which matches up with the three weeks that uh, Julio Jones could be on the practice squad. Exactly. Or three yeah. elevations. And you know, if you need Mario Goodrich, you, you can elevate him three times now. Right. Um, I think the big difference, I mean, um, one thing about Josiah, Josiah Scott, he's physical and Goodrich is not. Mm -hmm. So 
and in the slot, you know, you, you want that. You want a guy, he's got to be physical. You got to tackle an open space. And um, so, I mean, I'm going to run through their, their secondary real quick. It's, Dave. it's crazy. It's a lot to keep track of. Um, so the guys on IR um, are uh, Justin Evans with a knee for f- presumably for four weeks. Could be long. Saw him in a brace yesterday. Yeah. He's just always going to be hurt. Um, Zach McPherson and Devontae Maddox on IR. Um, long-term. Long-term. Um, Even though there's no designation, but they're long-term. Right. Well, there's the designation for McPherson, I guess. Yeah. Um, Maddox conceivably, but highly unlikely. Now there's five. He's been around a lot, by the way. Yeah, he has been. Um, five D-backs on the injury report. Um on Wednesday, and it was a walkthrough, so this reflects what would have been if it was a full practice. Reed Blankenship, ribs, did not practice. Bradley Roby, shoulder, did not practice. Slay was limited um, with with that knee. Kind of think he'll play. And then the good news, Sydney with the hamstring, Sydney Brown, and uh, Eli Ricks with the um, knee, both full. So you'd expect them to be available. Yeah. Um, the, healthy, the healthy D-backs who are not on the injury report, who – um, Bradbury, Job, Josiah Scott, and Keely Wingo are the corners, and Edmonds and Makai Gardner, who's on the practice squad, are the safeties. Yeah, and then Tristan McCollum and Taiwan Mullen, also on the practice squad. So they really need everybody back. But um, you know, Sydney has that versatility; can play slot or safety, but he just hasn't played much. Yeah, everyone's really excited. I talked to Sydney. Yesterday, he's 100%. He's going to play this week. Um, fans are excited about him because he's a third-round pick. He has 16 defensive snaps in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, so... So you're looking at... So let's try to guess here what this starting secondary is going to look like against the Dolphins. Um, not a good start with Reed Blankenship missing... That That's the big one to me yeah. um, that we didn't know about or that, that we, we didn't know about until this press game. So... If you don't have him, you're probably looking at and, and know him or Justin Evans. So you're out both starters. You're probably looking at Edmonds and Sidney Brown as your starting safeties. Right. That corner, if Slay's back, you feel good about the outside corners. You'll have Slay and Bradbury. And then at the nickel, Josiah Scott? It has to be. It has to be, right? Who else could it be? There aren't other options. Yeah. I mean, Rick's, but. I mean, Maybe they'll they'll mix and match a little bit. Um, the problem is you don't have another safety unless it's Makai Garner being up. But I would think you you'd prefer to not play the rookie out of position over, you know, because like theoretically you could slide Sydney up to play some reps in the nickel. But then that that means you're putting Makai Garner on the field. Yeah, and that's not ideal. Yeah, uh, but there's not a lot of different options. Yeah. Hell of a week for it, huh? Yeah, fortunately, you know, the offense that's coming to town is only averaging 500 yards a game <laughs> yeah. and 38.8 points per game. Yeah, we'll get to them in a minute. Uh, other stuff from the injury report. We mentioned Devontae Smith, hamstring injury, did not practice on Wednesday. You know, it's fair to wonder if if that has something to do with signing Julio. Yeah, that came to mind when I saw Devontae on the injury report. Um, which we didn't know about until the injury report came out. No, he obviously day. played the entire game. That that fourth and eight was a deep ball to him. And you wonder if it was bothering him. I mean, he seemed to go get up. It just kind of he just didn't catch he it. He got but, pulled down a little bit on that. Um, oh, I'm talking about. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the one he was wide open. Oh, yeah. um, that he just dropped. Um, he didn't look hurt, but if something's bothering you, it can certainly affect the way you play. He didn't use it as an excuse to his credit. Um, but that's a concern. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's we talk about the drop off at some positions and there's a that was a big drop off. Yeah, no doubt about it. So and just from a numbers game without Quez Watkins, you're down the four on the active roster. One of them, Britton Covey. Yeah. And one of them is Julio Jones <laughs> oh, on the active, on roster. The active yeah. roster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, they're going to patch this thing together Sunday night and. Um, Lane Johnson too didn't did was listed as a non-participant on Wednesday's practice, but I I think it's fair to say there is some uh, th- there's some thought process to he'll play, and I, I think there's some uh, 
encouraging signs that he might be ready. And he doesn't need to practice. Mm -hmm. um, I would expect him. In fact, even if he plays, I think because he, he won't be 100%, I think you'd rather prepare Driscoll. Yeah, no doubt about it. Get Driscoll. Now, Lane might be limited Friday. I would guess we're not going to see him Thursday, today. Um, maybe he'll be limited Friday. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, so but he's not a guy that needs the Walking around without his ankle taped yesterday. That was good news. I'm just spotting things in that locker room. Yeah. A lot of a lot of body parts that are wrapped or not wrapped. What does Sydney say about his his hamstring? If he could have taped it on the back of his leg and played the last three weeks, he would have. Just like just get it go go to like yeah. Wawa and get a hamstring. Some fans probably would have Target. given up their hamstrings. I told him I was like, You're young. Don't take these hamstrings for granted. You're gonna be old one day and be playing like beer league softball and start ripping hamstrings up and you'll never heal. Did that happen to you? Yeah. One of my saddest athletic moments playing beer league softball, rounding first, nice little double. Just felt like I got shot and it just doesn't heal. It just doesn't heal. They never heal. It's unbelievable. Can I share my saddest athletic moment? Yes, please. It was also beer league softball. <laughs> yeah. We we had it uh, we had a team in the um, South Jersey Sunday Men's League, uh, the Broadsheet Bullies. So for people who don't know newspaper lingo, Broadsheet is a large the larger newspaper where a tabloid is like Daily News. Broadsheet is a larger newspaper. So we call ourselves the Broadsheet Bullies, which good. I was proud of that name. And we had guys from like the Inquirer, the Courier Post, the Atlantic City Press. Uh, my paper is at the Gloucester County Times, and we all like we all played. Um, your former professor, Phil Anastasia, mm -hmm. was our three-hole hitter. He's a great athlete. Um, so we were up like 6-3. Six, six, and I played third base. And for some reason, I was in left field for the last inning. Somebody got hurt or something. I'm not an outfielder. The other team got the bases low to a two outs. And I'm in left field. And a guy hits like a – it wasn't a line drive. It was like a, a, a fly ball to, to left center. And I'm like running for it. And I, there was like a, a chuck hole in the, in, the, in the ground and my right foot went into it. And as I was about to catch the ball and I start like, I start, I lose my balance. I didn't get hurt, but I lose my balance and the ball just hits my glove as I'm like going down and, and bounces into the deep right center gap and three, three runs score. We lose a game before runs score. We lose a game. Oh, you got an excuse there. No. No, so I was I, actually we had we had a long winning streak up to that point, and you didn't uh, make excuses. I did. I made everyone I oh, yeah. think of actually. I was just lying there. I would have gotten up even if I wasn't hurt. I would have gotten up limping. I never got up. <laughs> I I just stayed. <laughs> You're there. still there to this day. I stayed there for at least half an hour. Everybody left, and I was just lying there. My roommate, who was on the team, um, came over and poured a beer on me. <laughs> Fair. And then he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> I was just laying there by myself. Yeah. And uh, never, never lived that one down. Yeah. It's tough. It stays with you, huh? And the official score called it uh, E7 correctly. Yeah. You know, could, could have called it a. Now imagine being Quez Watkins dropping a, a pass in a Super Bowl. Yeah. This is just at a little park in Woodbury, New Jersey. Yeah. And it, probably the ratings weren't probably quite as high yeah, as the Super probably Bowl. Not. not as much on the it line. Was, it was similar. <laughs> it was really similar to what Quez did, yeah. except there was no chuckle. The field wasn't great, but mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, uh, other injury stuff: Jalen Carter limited. It looks like I think the Eagles can hope to have him back. Yeah, for this game, Dallas Goddard with a groin injury limited. Uh, he got hurt in the game, but I think there's confidence he'll be able to play. Millen Williams with an ankle, he'll play. Uh, he's a very tough, dude. Uh, slay the knee. We'll see. Uh, and then the other injury we didn't mention, Marlon Tui Pelotu with the triceps. He should be back. He's a full participant. I think Slay's going to play, but um, yeah, I mean, I think if you're if you're limited on Wednesday, I, I feel start. like you're trending yeah. the right way. The guys I'd be concerned about are, um, you know, Devonte Reed um, and Lane, um, and Roby. I think is probably out. I think Roby's out. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if like did they, I mean, did they rush him? In, like, it was a shoulder injury. Yeah. Now, if it was a Hammy. soft tissue, you'd yeah. say maybe there's a case. I, yeah, shoulder, I don't think so. Yeah. You're probably right. Yeah. It's something that occurred to me. Yeah. It's not, not a bad thought, but not, not with this injury, I don't think. All right. Let's take a break. Uh, we have a bunch of dolphin stuff on the other side. 
You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we've got everything from turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store and NissanUSA.com today. Catch all the sports action and more at Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Whether it's the money line or the pass line, there's something for everyone in a great sports book. Rivers Casino, Philadelphia. Philly loves a winner. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Herb the Eagles being Kelly Green on Sunday night, facing the Miami Dolphins. Not just the best offense in the NFL, one of the best offenses we've ever seen through six weeks of a season. They've been unbelievable. They've been unbelievable, and um, they're just like the fastest team you'll ever see. Yeah. Um, you know that old cliche you got to, you know, defensive coordinators like to say, you got to defend every blade of grass. This is a team that makes you defend every blade of grass. They can beat you everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Even without um, A-Chan, mm-hmm. who's, who's uh, out, uh, Eagles got a break there. But, I mean, they're still – I mean, they still have Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, and Raheem Mostert. Uh, number one in yards per game by over 100 yards per game. Yeah. And the Eagles are second. Eagles are second with 395. Dolphins are four. 499. Yeah. So this is fun. The difference between one and two is the same as the difference between two and 25. <laughs> That's great. What a great stat. I love yeah. that. Um, they're averaging eight yards per play. It's unbelievable. Um, they're number one in rushing, uh, 182 yards a game. Number one, and they're averaging six and a half yards per carry. Um, and are also number one in passing offense. <laughs> Uh, 317 with Tua and an incredible stat, 9.5 yards per pass play. I mean, they're getting a first down every time they drop back, basically. Um, Tua does throw some picks, um, and they protect. I mean, they're number two in sacks allowed, in fewest sacks allowed. Yeah. Well, I, some of that is protecting. A lot of that is the ball is out. It's out quick. It is out so quick. 2.32 seconds, time to throw. Number one, they're averaging 25 first downs a game. Again, Eagles are second at 24. So it tells you what red zone, you know, they're number one in red zone. Eagles are 23 in red zone. Um, I think the one interesting thing the Dolphins are not good at on offense is fourth down. They're 27th. So if you can get them at some fourth downs, <laughs> yeah. get them they're not seeing a lot of fourth downs. I'm they sure. don't have a good kicker. So there's that. Um, well, he's a little rusty, I'm sure. He's just kicking <laughs> extra points all the time. Yeah, they are. They're explosive. Now, the one thing, um, they haven't really played anyone. Yeah, I mean, and and the, obviously the, their one loss was to the Bills. They played a really tight game in week one against the Chargers. They won that by a couple points. But they've only, I think the Bills are the only winning team they've played. Mm-hmm. And the last two weeks, they played maybe two of the, the last three wins, Broncos, Giants, and Panthers. Those are maybe three of the worst teams. And the Patriots yeah. are in that mix, it's too. It's fair. That's a, that's a good point. Um, it's just, you know, the, what they're doing against anyone will be impressive, but you're right. I, it, it takes a little bit, a little bit of the luster off. So like in, in my matchups, it's funny because the first matchup is Dolphins weapons against the Eagles banged up secondary. And it's like 500 words. It's a lot, uh, just because they're, it's, it's a really tough deal, but you mentioned something like Tua, uh, and, and his, uh, his propensity for turnovers, just like the the way this offense is designed, like there are going to be opportunities yeah. to take away the football at times. We've seen the Eagles not capitalize on those. The turnover luck has turned a little bit this year. But yeah, big time. Three straight games without a takeaway. First time in, yeah. in 11 years and only the second time ever. You get a football in your hands on Sunday. You better. You got you got to get that takeaway. That means you, Terrell Edmonds, Terrell Edmonds, whatever the heck your name is. Terrell, like a normal person. Terrell. Um, who else dropped? Uh, Morrow dropped one. Morrow dropped one. Morrow dove over one. Yeah. If the football is in your hands, you got to secure it in this game. Because if you can steal possessions from the Dolphins in any way, you have to do it. Whether that means long drives on offense or that means a takeaway on defense. The, the fewer possessions, it is pretty simple here. Fewer possessions, fewer chances they have to put up big points. Yeah, I mean, they're going to score on a high percentage of their drives. Mm-hmm. Um, Eagles only have two interceptions all year. 
and they were both early. Reed had one, and uh, Slay had the yeah. Had and that's one. why it kind of stings in this game a little bit to not have Reed. We think uh, because he's the guy on that back end who is opportunistic, who will drive to the football, um, who will make you pay if you throw a pass uh, without seeing him. And hey, I don't know if they're going to have him. Yeah, Dolphins only have two picks as well. Yeah, um, but. And their defense is average, but it yeah. doesn't need to be better than average. Sure. We'll get to that defense in a second. Uh, Raheem Mostert, obviously, like Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle are the guys who get all the acclaim. But Raheem Mostert's playing great. Former Eagle, uh, a ton of touchdowns already. Yeah, was it nine? Nine rushing, nine rushing, two, two receiving. receiving. It's eleven touchdowns in six games. Has anyone else had had that many? I uh, could look it up, but what I'm going to do is look up where he ranks all time rushing average. Um. Because he's he's up there, but I'm in I'm in team stats finder instead of player stats season finder. Um, this is where you tell me to talk while you figure it out, but you talk anyway. Yeah, and then just drag it along. I, I have been known to do that. <laughs> um, he's been great though. Yeah, he's such a talent when he's healthy. I mean, he's always had injury problems, but yeah, he's he's been able to stay healthy. Uh, AFC Player of the Week was he coming off that performance? Yeah, he had 115 rushing yards. 17 receiving yards and three touchdowns in their win over the Panthers last week. What if is this the first time he'll no, he's played in Philly before, right? Yeah, I believe with so. the Niners. Um Raheem Moster is is fourth in NFL history. Actually, among running backs with 300 or more career carries, Marion Motley and Rashad Penny are tied for number one, and Raheem Mostert's number three. Tied with Bo Jackson. The Eagles are doing their part to make sure Penny's average doesn't get hurt. Tied with Bo Jackson and Jamal Charles. Um, That's a motley crew. It's not. Uh, I, Rashad Penny, we'll have to talk about him at some point. Good I don't point. know if there's much to say. Well, we could talk about his three carries. And yeah. Kind of. It's no, it's fascinating to me. Um, yeah, so most has been good. Now, the one area where the, the Dolphins are a little susceptible is on the offensive line. Yeah. Uh, of course, we mentioned the problem is that football is out so quick, but I think the Eagles have a chance. If, if they can get after Tua, this is a different game. That's true. I just don't know if they'll be able to get to him in time. Um, he's only been sacked once in the last three games. Yeah. Um, the Bills got him four times. You know, I was, <laughs> I was looking up Tua's stats on the road against winning teams, and he doesn't have any because they haven't played any winning teams on the road, which is a different animal. Um, uh, no, well, Buffalo, that's the that's the one. Yeah, my bad. But um, he's got he's been sacked twice in five games other than Buffalo. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of that is just him because they have some warts on that offensive line. They have injuries there too. So, uh, Toronto Armstead is on IR, so they don't have him. Uh, their starting center is banged up, didn't practice on Wednesday. So you can get there. And the Eagles obviously have waves of players. It's kind of like, you know, we've talked about big games before where, heck, Super Bowl 52 was like this, where you know you're probably not going to get to the quarterback very often, but you you got to keep trying. You, you, got, you can't get discouraged by it because it could take one big play in, in the second half to, like, change the tide. So – you got to just keep sending waves and 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 not get down on yourself if you're not getting there. The BG lesson, yeah, just kept coming. Yeah, you got to keep keep flowing. Uh, you got to keep sending them in waves. And then the secondary, I I think it's important. You know, Sean Desai talked about uh, the speed element, and he didn't want to call it a speed mismatch. It's clearly a speed mismatch. Sure. That's not a knock on anyone. He really did though. Yeah, it. I mean, it I mean, is. He like, said the way you deal with being mismatched in speed is with physicality. Physicality, which bump. It's not easy. It's really easy to say bump, but uh, this offense is predicated on timing. And if if you if you throw that timing off, you have a chance. And then obviously the secondary works in conjunction with the defensive line. You throw off the timing, you you muddy that picture, and you're able to get home on Tua. Now it's really easy for me to say that here on a Thursday morning. It's a lot tougher to do it on Sunday night. And the one good thing about the Eagles' pressure is really starting to show up. First three games, they had six sacks. The last three games, they have 14 sacks, I believe, five, four, and five. It's been showing up all year. Well, they're finishing. They're finishing. And I don't think it showed up consistently um, early in the season. Okay. Um, 
they were in the in the neighborhood, but they weren't finishing. But they are finishing now. And obviously, what's changed in week four? Reddick got his cast off, and he's been a monster. And Sweat's been been and great well, too. Five and a half sacks in his last three games, and his last six games as well. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, you know, he's got more sacks in his first twenty-two games as an Eagle than Reggie White. Wow. Yeah, it's like half a sack more. Um, I think the only defensive players to start all six games, I believe, are Sweat and Reddick. I believe. Certainly not any of the D-backs. Oh, maybe Cunningham? No. I, oh, because they're starting in, in, in nickel. Yeah. Um, I think Jordan Davis started all six, actually, as okay. well. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, having Reddick back playing at that level is is huge. And um, man, he had that one last week where he got there so fast. It's a shame they lost that game because if they win that game, we spent all week talking about how great the pass rush was, yeah. how they just closed the game, sweat and and Reddick off the edge. Yep. Now, the problem, I don't know if you have enough time for the edge rushers to get home in this week. You might yeah. need to rely on Jalen Carter and Fletcher Cox uh, and the quickest point from A to B or the quickest route from point A to B. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, two is playing at such a high level. Um He's got 14 touchdowns already in yeah. six games. Oh, look, and, and six, the knock on him is like, it's it's the system. It's the system. All right. No. He's running the system. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, but <laughs> he's, he's he's more than a system quarterback. I okay. Mean, I, I, I mean, I've never seen him flourish without it, like in, in the NFL, but that's well, fine. Like, he, you're allowed to be – there's nothing wrong with being great in a system. I mean, he's 25. Yeah. So it's not like – I mean, he's always been good. I mean – I like it too. I like a lefty quarterback. Yeah, there's there's a couple of them finally. Um, passer rating in the last two years, 105.5 and 114.1. Uh, I mean, even his rookie year, he had 11 touchdowns, five picks. Um, 66 and 20. His career passer rating is 98. I mean, he's he's legit. You know, there were concerns, obviously, with the concussions that it looked like. I mean, it looked really bad. Like he might yeah. might be career threatening, but. Um, He's healthy and playing at an extreme level. Yeah. And then the one thing we didn't mention was Uncle Vailoa. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I pre, it, it's a tough name to say. It's Tunga Vailoa, but uh, Tua is it's singular, Tua. so yeah. it's nice. Tua is singular. Yeah. Well, his last name's singular. It's just long. Yeah, but I'm saying that that's the benefit of he's not he's not Matt Tunga Vailoa. Like everyone knows who you're talking about when you say Tua. Okay. Okay. Right? Sure, whatever you say. Um, and I actually had a question about um, related to that. Um, in that, in the list of all-time receivers that we were looking at and like how many played for the Eagles, how far down that list do you have to go to find somebody who's not recognizable just by one name? Like Jerry. We know who Jerry is. Larry. There's no question who it is. T.O. Randy. Isaac. You know who those guys are. Like, who's the top guy? Although, no one, like, I know, you, like, Isaac is, yeah, Isaac Bruce, but, like, I feel like everyone calls him Isaac Bruce. All yeah, right. If you say Isaac, people, yeah. I mean, nobody call. I'm not saying people yeah, call like, him They Isaac, know who you mean. Like, um, where Jerry is Jerry. Keep going. Tim Brown. Tim. Yeah, Tim that's is probably tough. the guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's seventh on the list. Steve Smith, and there's a confusion with the Eagle Steve Smith, and, <laughs> you know. Um. See that Steve Smith clip with Jerry Judy? Marvin. We know who Marvin is. Reggie. Yeah. And Reggie White was that good of a receiver? Reggie Wayne sure was. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, but no, I didn't see that clip. Go watch that. Okay. It was fun. Uh, right. when, when the Eagles are on offense, um, I know there's not as much excitement about this, or is it like it's not what the Dolphins are known for, but it is Vic Fangio's system. Vic was here last year, which is like a fun little – side note of this game he was here helping the eagles offense but i'm sure he helped the defense too and they just didn't want to broadcast that as much why sure. would you not have him help the defense that would yeah. be nuts um but he he said something i i read a, a joe shad tweet that um vic said it's more of an advantage for the eagles because the information was more going from him to them than from you know not from them to him yeah i think that stuff's kind of I don't say overrated, but I'm not sure how much help you can get. Um, Gives you a head start if you're the coach. A little bit. Maybe a little or bit. either coach. 
I mean, Sean Desai also has quite a bit of information on on Vic Fangio. He runs a version of his scheme, and he was he coached with him for a while. Yeah, and uh, don't the Eagles have a former coach who's down there? Uh, another former coach who was um, he was like assistant uh, receivers coach or something. Maybe not. I don't know. Joe Casper, safeties coach. Right? Oh, Joe Casper. Okay, yeah. Joe, Joe Casper. So maybe they get information. <laughs> Although none of the Eagles safeties were here last year. <laughs> none of them were here three weeks ago. Yeah, that's true. Um, when the Eagles are on offense, Suo Peta has another tough task, Christian Wilkins. Yeah. Uh, it's every week. Murderer's row for Suo right now. But Wilkins is a really good player. Uh, productive this year, he's been, but he's been good. He's a chirper too. I can't wait to see the. I, I want there to be a mic'd up segment. Sua chirping back at Christian Wilkins. Is Sua a talker? No, no, I can't imagine. No, I, I, I yeah. he's playing well. He's fine. Yeah. Um, but things get a little dicey when you have two backups on the right side of the sure. Line. Yeah. Uh, well, if one of them is Jack Driscoll, they get dicey. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, AJ Brown has a chance for another big game. You would think and the Eagles might need to score some points in this one. They so uh, Xavier Howard began the practice week as it did not participate because of a, a groin injury. Jalen Ramsey Out. is practicing this week, but he's not going to play. So Which the Eagles, is weird, but yeah. Well, it's not. He hasn't played. So yeah, they're they're going to bring him along slowly. Yeah, That's uh, dodging a bullet. He's a great sure. player. A couple weeks in a row, missing a corner. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think. It help him last week. Well, it did. It might have helped him. But... Yeah. Um, so I, I think. Uh, AJ could have a big game, and we'll see if Devontae's healthy enough. But that's certainly an area where the Dolphins are banged up. Uh, and then DeAndre Swift, you know, if you're looking for a way to take possessions away from that Dolphins offense, I'm not saying you're going to run 50 times, but moving the chains and playing that game a little bit makes some sense this week. What do you make of the Eagles not being able to run against the Jets, who everyone else has run against? And that was even when Lane was still in the game. Yeah. Um, I thought they got some negative plays and it scared the hell out of them and they got out of it. Yeah. That is a good the, – the Jets linebackers were fantastic. They were. They are great. They're really fast. Uh, Physical. So, and, and the Eagles, like, man, they had negative plays, which is like they, they don't have negative plays. And right. I, I think that was enough to scare them out of it. Yeah. And they, they saw the mismatches on the outside. They went for them. And as much as it annoys everyone – Part of what Brian Johnson said is accurate about, you know, I, I I hate the term extension of the run game because, but they are. It kind of is like your your the screen game was working. You're throwing to the backs, even like the design screen to Dallas Goddard that ended up as an interception. I like that design and and play call worked. Yeah, like it was it was blocked up right. It was just a great play by Jermaine Johnson. So some of that stuff did work. Swift was the first Eagles running back with eight catches in a game since Bryce Brown. No, everything else goes to <laughs> Bryce Brown. It was Darren Sproles. Okay. In in like 14. And they just haven't thrown to the backs a lot. Um he has that ability. Yeah. And so I look back in that week one game, that they they haven't really faced a ton of great running backs, the Dolphins this year, but they faced Austin Eckler in week one, who's obviously a dual threat. In that game, Eckler had 117 rushing yards. And 47 receiving yards. I really like Eckler. Oh, he's a great player. I don't want to compare Swift to him. Undrafted, right? Eckler? Was he? I, I don't know. I think. I think he was undrafted. Uh, but Swift obviously has dual threat ability. He's explosive. So uh, I think there might be a little bit of a template there. Undrafted out of Western State. I'd be lying to you if I said I knew where Western State was. Well, you was. can probably make a pretty good guess. I can cut out half of the country. It's not in Maine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Half of the, so it's out there somewhere. Is it in Nevada? Close. California? No. Arizona? Keep going. You're surrounding New Mexico? It. No. Utah? No. Colorado? It's in Gunnison, Colorado. Okay. I think we need to get some Western, Western. Oh, that's Western Colorado. That's a different college. Western State. It doesn't exist, apparently. It's in Gunnison, Colorado? I think that's... I'll be out there on the bye week. Western Western Colorado. I don't know if that's the same school. Austin Eckler. Let's see. Western Colorado. So they call it Western State. Western Colorado. Gunnison. I think we should get some gear, some Western State gear. I'm going to be out there. 
in in Gunnison. Yeah, I'm going uh, on the bye week. Really, taking a little trip to Colorado. Gotta so. get, get hit hit up the bookstore. Yeah, get some Western steak gear. Uh, I'll yeah. take a I'll take a mug, a shot glass, <laughs> a cap, and a hoodie. All right, fair. How are we feeling about this game? I feel a little better when I started looking at who the Dolphins have played. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is important. And I think that Denver game really, I mean, look, their offense is great. Don't get me wrong, but it skews the numbers. Definitely when you, when you have, what do they have, 700 yards in that game? Wild. And they they let up. They they let up, called the dogs off. Um, so I th I'm leaning toward picking the Eagles now. When, when the week started, I was leaning toward the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to see if, like, if, if it looks like Lane's going to play. There's so much injury stuff this week. Yeah. And, and I'm the one who collects our predictions each week. And I even mentioned in the email, like, hey, guys, feel free to wait until after the final injury report comes out. Because there's yeah. a lot of moving parts. And there. I like, um, I like getting mine in early with mm -hmm. whatever my first impression is, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till this is a good week to do that because you're right. It, like, the injuries could really swing this one. Yeah. I think if, if Lane's playing, I'm going to pick the Eagles. It okay. might be as simple as if Lane's not playing, I'm going to pick the Dolphins. Okay. Um, which is funny because you think of the important matchup is Miami's offense against the Eagles' mm -hmm. defense. And Reed certainly is going to be as important as Lane in this game. Um, but I, I, I don't think they're going to – I don't think they're going to give up 50 points or anything like that. Um, I think the game could be played in the 30s and high 20s. Yeah, I think they're going to have to keep pace. Yeah, because like we're talking about all this, all the, all the things the Eagles can do defensively to slow them down. They're still going to get theirs. You know, they're going to get theirs. It's I I have a hard time looking at that Eagles secondary, looking at the Dolphins offense, and not seeing thirty points. That's fair, and I mean, the Eagles' pass defense and thirty even, points is low, <laughs> even when they're totally healthy. I'm not sure they're a great pass defense mm -hmm. and they're not going to be totally healthy i have been impressed this is i mean what a week for sean desai I, i've been very impressed by sean desai this year and it's kind of what's happening is kind of what i expected would happen like overall the numbers are not not going to look as good as they did last year because i don't think they have the talent i think the schedule is tougher but i i think he's doing more with less i think that's true um one thing i look at is the eagles are eighth in the NFL in passing yards per play. They're 20th in yards allowed. They're eighth in yards per play. Allowed? You mean? Yeah. Yards per play allowed. Yeah, yards yeah. per play allowed. Um, I think that's because teams aren't really running on them. So they've given up a lot of yards, but not a lot of yards per play. Um, they're number two in rushing yards, number six in rushing yards per play allowed. They're number, they're number nine defense in the league and number 11 in yards allowed yeah. per play. So with all the injuries to and be, with the turnovers slowing down and with no turnovers in three weeks, it's a really tough way to now they're going to have to get a couple takeaways, I, I would think, on Sunday. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a key that obviously you can't lose the turnover battle in this game. I Certainly think you have to, I think you have to win it. I mean, they were in that game out turnover to four nothing <laughs> is out turnover yeah. to sure. Is that legit? So but yeah. Zach Wilson ain't coming to town this week. No, no, he's not. Uh, but it's at home. Um, maybe get some guys back. Certainly having Slay back will I think he'll be back. That that um you know that Josh Job Tyreek Hill matchup would be a little scary. <laughs> a little bit. I'm leaning toward the Dolphins, full disclosure. Uh I could be swayed by the time I have to make my pick, but that's the way I'm leaning right now. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, and I haven't really totally made up my mind, but I am leaning leaning Eagles. Okay. I think more has to happen right for the Eagles to win. Like, everything has to kind of go perfectly. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. It uh, should be a fun game. It should be. I'm excited to watch it. I know fans will be out there. Uh, long day at a tailgate. I, I haven't looked at the weather forecast. Nor I. Um, Kelly Green night, which yeah. is fun. I know fans are excited about that. Seen a ton How much money do you think the Eagles have made off of Kelly Green in the last few months, because there's a ton of it. Um, I'm not good with like. It seems like a lot though. It's just like anecdotally. Yeah, I'd say like 40, 50 billion. Uh, Sunday <laughs> looks nice. Um, cool, cool day. Fifty six and sunny. Be chilly by nighttime. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a cold. Uh, I don't think dolphins like that cold weather. I don't think so. Coming up from Davy, thriving the heat. Yeah. 
Me too. I thrive in the heat. I don't, I don't like the cold weather either. Yeah, I like I'm the right heat. there with them. I'm big on that. All right, we good to wrap this up? Yeah. Uh, I want to remind everyone, as we do all the time, if you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click that like button and subscribe there as well. We appreciate all the support. That's it. We'll talk to you guys after the game. For Ruben, I'm Dave. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. Enjoy your weekends.